Scorpio, welcome to your 2022 astrological reading. And we're going to integrate a bit of tarot here. Look, it's already want to come out. Ooh, I like it. Not a nice card in the upright, but it came in the reverse. And this is about you breaking free and taking your power back when it shows up in the reverse. So love it. Um, very good energy, Scorpio. I know that um, y'all y'all like to stay in your power. And um, this might have to do with uh, finances, resources with the Two of Pentacles. Might have to do with you juggling some things, um, being between two opportunities, two options. Some of you may be moving from one location to another. We'll see as we get into this read. We're going to cover, you know, different areas. We're going to start off with relationships and romance. Uh, we're going to talk about career and money, and then we're going to close out with health and healing. So uh, we'll see as this story evolves, you know, um, what exactly this is with the pentacles. Um, but off the cuff, I'd say this has to do with your resources and you navigating some changes in your life and adapting to things, um, but you are breaking free from whatever this is, okay? Um, big year for you. Um let me say up front, um, this probably is, this reading is most going to resonate with the Scorpio Risings. Oh, I got to say a big thank you also. I have a Scorpio Rising, one of my favorite viewers, Scorpio Rising, gifted this bracelet um, to me. And she knows who she is. Thank you so much. Loving this bracelet. But yeah, Scorpio Risings will most um, benefit from this reading. If you don't know your rising, go to a place like astro.com and um, put in your birth data and it'll tell you what your rising sign is so that you know. And, you know, I'd say watch the sun, moon and rising videos, okay, for your natal chart. Um, but obviously, as many of you know, the most accurate is getting a, a private reading. And I do offer those if you are interested. The link is down below. And I am running a deal, um, 60 minutes for $100 to do your 20 22 um, astrological forecast so um, that's the most accurate but let's go on and get into it and I am going to continue shuffling while we're talking about the astrology and we'll see what comes out and I'm just in, in a flow and I'm going to go as spirit leads starting with your north node this year um, pretty significant okay because collectively we're dealing with a south node in Scorpio deep stuff okay okay i mean collectively that means that we're all releasing very scorpionic things <laughs> death taxes um shared resources um and if you want to know more about that i talk extensively about it in my 2022 astrological forecast i will have the video at the very end of this so you could just click on through if you want to keep watching on to that video but um how is this going to impact Scorpios? Because I think it's going to be, you know, quite significant, uh, this transit on Scorpios. Well, if, you know, your son is Scorpio, it, it, it could be like you, you are trying to struggle to get a handle on current events going on. And, and frankly, we all are. Okay. But I think that the hit is maybe a little bit harder. And, and I do see here with this, this card that there is some kind of need to adapt. And I am, by the way, telling all the fixed signs you being one of them, Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius being the other three, that we fix signs are going to have to be more flexible this year, and it's hard, okay? The energy of 2022 is probably going to be the hardest on the fixed signs because there's so much fixed energy this year that is impacting all of us. And I'm saying we because, I, as many of you know, I'm an Aquarius sun, Taurus rising, double fixed. <laughs> and the more fixed energy you have in your chart, the more this is going to be relevant for you that you're going to have to flex and flow all right um but it could be challenging because we don't like it we don't like it the fixed signs um if you want to know more about how this is impacting you as a sun sign scorpio then um go again into that natal chart and see um you know where your sun sign uh what house your sun sign occupies and then that's going to tell you where this is going to hit most relevant all right now if you're scorpio ascendant uh, this is probably going to bring about some internal transition going on within yourself that other people might not think is so apparent um but i i could see you pulling back over the next year um with a scorpio ascendant to do that internal work more privately you might want to watch also the taurus reading because that's your opposite and they're being they're being triggered with the nodes as well. 
so you could probably like there's some mirroring going on and probably glean something from that reading um look at that some of you at a sailmate trying to find your piece and i'm seeing two twos here which is a lot about partnership it's a balance number of you trying to balance things out and find but i, I i'm gonna have to like I'm gonna, let me let me see where that goes okay now with your north node and your seventh house i think that you're gonna try to get more security and stability by partnering with other people but the challenge is going to be to overcome some old hurts that have maybe gone on last year and even linger into this year because there's a lot of there's a lot of spillover energy um, collectively we're still dealing with saturn and aquarius right from last year there are um still you know other energies carrying over um that i'll talk about in a moment but it just suffice it to say there are going to be some recurrent themes from last year that are giving us the opportunity to have a second chance at resolving um now, where are you going to get your good luck this year? Where are you going to get your lucky breaks? I think it's going to be in your fifth house, okay? Um, having to do with fun, dating, romance, creative projects. I'm really great if you're single, you know, and you want to get out and date and have some fun. You could have a lot of opportunities with that. If you are married and you're wanting to have children, really um, a good energy for fertility, all right? Um and you know even when when um planets go into retrograde this this energy of jupiter in your fifth house is going to really help help soften any difficulties with the retrogrades lovely energy to have now um in may jupiter is going to go into aries in your fourth house and that's showing me some really good good news coming in with your money by the way i don't know these money cards are coming out i'm really interested in your money reading we'll get to that in a bit but good news coming in with money and um maybe yes creative projects all right but uh from may onward um yeah it could bring about some changes with your work and your day-to-day -day life um And I'm sorry, I meant to say from spring to summer, Jupiter and Aries is going to really um, bring a lot of blessing, particularly if you're wanting to make some kind of improvement with your daily health habits, like getting on a new health regimen, eating a cleaner diet, getting back into shape, really good time for that. And maybe just trying to do something to get your health back in check if something got out of whack with your health, that's going to help. But I do see with the moon, some of you getting financial blessing, by the way, maybe and coming through, because this came out when we were talking about changes with your day to day, the sixth house, your daily work. Some of you might be light workers, um, maybe work in the field of, of dealing with the intuitive side or dealing with the empathic side. Okay, maybe a oh, Cancer or Scorpio or Pisces relevant here. Um, I see again, good money news tied to this line of work. And I'm also seeing that it might have to do with communicating about money, resources, stability, security. But I don't know if you see it just yet, okay, uh, with the moon there. I'm not sure that you're clear. It's like something is still veiled, all right? The challenges that you're going to have this year is that Saturn is transiting your fourth house of home, family, sense of belonging. And so, you know, in some way... There, there's a level of seriousness there going on with family matters and it go, might go back to your childhood jupiter's in that fifth house trying to lighten things up and maybe help you re recapture more of that innocence in your life that childlike joy okay yet with saturn in that fourth house there's also a very contemplative part of you uh, maybe looking back reflecting on where do i belong and i might go all the way back to your childhood this issue of needing to find that sense of belonging and that comfort and nurturing um but again i'm not sure if you're clear yet on it and i do see as well that with partnership making plans 
again, something is not really clear. Some of you, you're trying to plan on how to improve things financially, but you're not really clear. But I feel like it's going to come through using your intuition. This, you know, money and, and emotions could be very much mixed as well as another vibe I'm getting off of this. So to make your plans, I'm, I'm really seeing be, be intuitive, use your intuition, tap into that. All right, and uh, at the foundation, you've got Queen of Cups here. Well, there we go, Scorpio. Um, and that's that's really about you um, being that ideal wife, mother, life partner. It's about you being uh, empathic, caring, nurturing, being a healer, being a lover, mind, body, soul. I mean, that is the ideal. That is the ideal wife and mother right there. So lovely energy. Let's get on to your love portion of the reading, relationships and romance. And let's see what's coming up for you in, wow, that just flew out. 2020. <laughs> Here we go again. Queen of Chalices. Well, you're just taking center stage, Scorpio. My gosh. Especially the Scorpio females. Woo. Look at that. Tenderness. She's all about the love. All about the love. Okay. Right? That's God's currency. The gold standard. Love. Absolutely. Now, in January, is like I've been telling everybody, the slowest part of this year. Slower than molasses. Um, you might have been going back and forth with somebody. Somebody's trying to get attention. Somebody's trying to get the victory, but it's back and forth and back and forth with that person and a bunch of cards came out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, let me say that with Venus retrograde happening in your third house, um, in January, you know, it, it could be that you are pausing, um, you know, taking a pause on these relationship concerns. Um, and yeah, there's some, maybe some kind of challenge going on and relating to people. Yes. With the knave of swords, um, might've been some biting words that have come between you and another person or very mentally restless energy having to do with a, an Aries, um, perhaps a father figure, a husband, you know, Oh, fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, if those signs are not relevant, I'm just seeing that this is a very, very masculine energy, very passionate, and it has to do with the, you know, matter of commitment, okay, and getting a brand new beginning with that Ace of Wands, but it looks like somebody's holding back and being very self-protective about their happiness, you know, they, they're guarding them, their hearts, I feel, because, they don't they don't want their happiness spoiled and i told you jupiter in that fifth house is all about happy happy it's a it's a very sexual energy i'm gonna say and i think it's coming from this masculine it he seems like he's committed he seems like he's got some things you know under control he's very mature i love to see this energy and this is somebody who really wants to unite sexually but perhaps is not being generous Somebody here in the relationship is not being generous because they're they're either out for their own happiness or they're afraid of their happiness being taken. That's weird. They're very, very much about, I want the victory here. I want the victory. And so I think that it's you, Scorpio. You want to win. You want the victory. But um, maybe up in your head about, am I going to be able to get this with this person? Is this person going to make me happy? Yeah, they look solid. Yeah, they look like they're going to come in. They want a new start. They're very warm. They're very passionate. But I don't know if I'm going to be happy with this person and ultimately get the victory with them. And if you don't think so, then you're probably going to hold back. I, I see some holding back going on here, okay? And it might be them that they're bringing, they're bringing the commitment and the passion, but I don't know if they're putting you in that happy place that you want to be. Um, so that might be a concern. I mean, Venus retrograde is just... At the beginning of this year, a very sober energy and a lot of people feeling that, okay? Five of chalices, eight of wands. Um, some of you might still be stuck on somebody from the past, all right? Um, or somebody from the past is wanting forward movement. Either you're talking to somebody from the past a lot, or this if you're talking to somebody new, uh, what you're talking about is... 
you know, the, the issues from the past that ha that are still on your mind that you're still having to work through and process in order to get progress in your life. Mm. I do see progress coming for you though. Okay, but it's probably through communicating and talking things through. Let me also say, uh, on a side note, you know, because of third house, it's not really the sexiest house, right? It has a lot to do with your local community and neighbors and siblings. So this Venus retrograde impacting that house could relationally bring up issues that are challenging with, you know, brother figures in your life. And again, I see resolution coming through kind of being a mediator and talking th things through, having some tough discussions about, again, stuff in the past and talking it through is really going to light it up. I'm seeing it in the cards and in the astrology. So fortunately, this retrograde is not going to last the whole month. Uh, don't let it slow you down over your long-term goals. Things will get, you know, moving forward just while, you, you know, Venus is in retrograde. Uh, try to be patient with yourself and others. Take things at a slower pace, especially, yes, if it's concerning other people and difficulties from the past that you need to reflect on and work through, well, you know, just work through it, okay? Um, because that presents an opportunity for you to get closer to family or bring you closer to friends or even intimate partners. But definitely I can see some unfinished family business being brought up during this time. Um, and it's going to be a good time to resolve it at the you know beginning of the year. You don't want it to haunt you and carry on through for the rest of the year. All right. So um, now you've also got Uranus in your seventh house of long-term committed partnerships. So this could bring some very unexpected twists and turns in terms of you partnering with somebody. Um, but again, you know, your individual astrology is probably very relevant here. You know, take all things into consideration. But um, if you are partnered during this time, um, yes, there might be some unexpected breakups and separations. Um, that could be part of the unexpected twists and turns with Uranus. For others of you, it will be that you change the way that you relate to others. You change the way that you're talking and communicating. Um, and that really just positively changes and transforms the dynamic of these relationships. Now, if you are single, when Jupiter is in Pisces, this can really bring you a lot of romance the first five months of the year. And so if you want a new relationship, it's going to be a good time for you to take advantage of that energy. And, you know, it, then the energy will come back around, you know, October, December time frame. Also, April, June will be very favorable months for you. But for the singles, what I'm getting here is Hangman, Five of Swords, and Knight of Chalices. So I do feel that... Um, some of you are wanting to take a risk in your life and maybe shake things up, particularly with that Uranus in the seventh house. Um, but I don't know that you're going to be able to get or give a really solid commitment during that time frame. Um, I do see a lot of romantic offers coming in, okay? But I think that part of the issue here with not giving or getting commitment is getting on the same page with people again with the swords this is about mind this is about communication so there's something perhaps with the communication or you know getting of the same mind that needs to be fine-tuned in order for you to kind of move out of that hangman energy where um, people are just kind of you know having fun maybe wanting to take risks with a love life but um, you know putting romantic offers out there but again, not really getting into a deeper level of commitment. Um, beware of that. If you want to break out of that, that stasis that I'm kind of seeing here with the relationships and this modest, you know, I'm not giving my all emotionally. Well, it, it's it's on the communication issue. I'm, I'm just seeing a recurrent theme here, okay, for, for the Scorpios. Now, if you are committed during this time, you, I think, are going through changes in your relationship that, again, are trying to get you to break some patterns. And I think that this is going to be the most challenging for committed Scorpios, particularly the females. I mean, the feminine energy came out pretty, pretty solid uh, in, the, in the general cards and in the love cards. Feminine energy is really being highlighted here. And again, I'm seeing some kind of emotional disconnect with the Scorpios that are committed, um, 
I think that if there is no change in the relationship, um, I'm here. Oh my gosh. I'm hearing this old, old Christian song, man. It's so old. It's almost like 20 years old. It's a move or move me. There's a mountain in my way. And it's basically in the song, he's asking God, move this mountain out of my way or move me. Move or move me. It's one or the other. And this is what I'm seeing here with the committed ones where um, if you can't get a change, if this obstacle or challenge in your relationship is not going to get moved out of your partnership, you're at a point where you want to be moved out of the partnership. Yes, there could be a breakup. And I think the most challenging months where if there were to be a breakup, if it was going to happen, it would probably happen a April, May, October, November. Um, unexpected twists and turns and surprises coming up. I do feel that some of you, um, if you're going through difficulties, uh, you are being spirit led to emotionally disconnect from something. Okay. To try to heal and get some emotional harmony back in your life and balance to walk away and leave something behind to that maybe gave you some happiness at some point in time, but is not really where your happiness is. Spirit is trying to guide you out of that to leave it behind and disconnect. Okay. From what, whatever is not bringing you the happiness. Now in March, things could very well get heated. Um, you know, regardless, I'm going to say regardless of, you know, whether or not you're in a commitment, Scorpio's, March is a time when things could really get heated because of Mars and, and um, Uranus squaring. So do not be surprised if the challenges from 2021 reappear their ugly heads <laughs> uh, this year. Okay, familiar challenges in March. This will be kind of a demanding time, one of the more demanding times. Um, because of having Mars as the ruler of your sign and it makes this unpredictable you know it makes things unpredictable because of uranus squaring causing some kind of difficulty or challenge so yeah there might be some arguments that come up that were on the table last year right the same old argument you're back at it again um, and maybe, yeah, you decide that you're just going to break free of it. You're going to loosen that bond with that person. And I don't think it's really going to be the most comfortable thing for you to go through. Um, yep, there you are. Some of you separating. Um, and that's Scorpio energy as well. And, you know, yeah, it might be temporary. It might be a temporary breakup for some of you. But I see abstinence there as well. Where, it, you know, if you don't break up, the two of you are not sleeping with each other. That's ugly. Um, so I think that as time goes on, um, you're going to get clear about what needs to get purged out of your life and, um, get free of whatever weight has been on your shoulders. Now in April, I think things are going to get a little bit smoother. You got a lot of cards, a lot of cards coming out. Um, let me say that in April, when Venus joins Jupiter in Pisces, um, this is going to um, be more of a sensual month, okay? I, I think that there will be, you'll see by April with these cards, that there's going to be more progress, okay? It's going to be slow and steady. Somebody trying to avoid a conflict or a fallout. Um, I, I don't know, though, that somebody still might be discontent here to say, oh, well, this is too little, too late. Why didn't you do that sooner? Why were you not trying to avoid a fallout or a breakup sooner? You know, um, be careful with that, okay? Um, those of you who are, you know, looking for a, a bit of, you know, excitement <laughs> um, in your life. Well, I mean, again, with Uranus, that might unexpectedly come out of nowhere by April, all right? Um, and if you want to manifest... Uh, some kind of excitement with your relationships or you want to strengthen a bond in April, it's going to be easier. Okay. If that's what you want to do. And that just flipped. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Some of y'all by April, you're just going to be like, um, 
with a stars card, you may be attracting a relationship or find yourself attracted to a relationship that is very spontaneous, very like live in the moment, no strings attached. And I know some of you are like, what? I know, but this is Uranus in the seventh house. So, or you come across somebody in your life, might be an Aquarian, or again, if you have Aquarius placements, this is relevant. I do see an attraction here. Somebody is attracted. But again, what they're attracted to is um, they just they just want to have fun. They just want to they want to live in the moment and enjoy themselves for a change. It seems like I saw a card in here that was upright, but now I'm not seeing it. Okay, we'll keep going. Um, also, April is going to be a very very um, fertile time of year. So again, if you're trying to have children. Oh, that's your month, right? Um, or again, you know, you want to get into some kind of creative project. Um, probably talk about that more when we get into the, you know, career and money portion of the reading. But I could definitely see April being a really good time for getting that going. Or just, you know, if you want to do a garden, okay? Uh, something like that. It just would really be the great time to do it because you're probably going to be very successful at whatever put you put your hand to to bring expansion and growth in your life and fertility a very fer fertile time um, of the year for you is april and also a great time for you to take advantage of the seductive power and i'm seeing it right there okay and you know you got it scorpio you do have a seductive power within you Right? You'll have that intensity about you. You have the um, also this my mystery about you, okay? So, um, yeah, work your, work your charm. Work your feminine wiles, right? <laughs> work that. Work that. Uh, where did she go? Where did she go? That queen of cups. My gosh. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all work your magic that I saw. Oh, she's hiding from me now. I can't find her. But you know what I'm talking about. This one here. This, this, usually I, I think of, you know, more the queen of fire as a seductress, but, um, uh, this is, I don't know. I think you're wooing them in. Okay. Scorpio. I think you are wooing them in. <laughs> Just be careful what you bring in. All right. Because, you know, going back to this, these are two cards here that are telling me. Um, people just want to live in the moment, and they don't really want to be tied down to anything. They just want to have fun. I'm hearing Cindy Lauper girls just want to have fun. <laughs> might be you. Might be you, Scorpio. Oh, I'm thinking of one of my Scorpio viewers that might just want to have fun with the Capricorn. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to say any names. Oh, look at that. Five pounds. We put that back. Some of you feeling like You want more, okay? You want more. Damn, these cards, they just keep a coming. And, you know, I, I can see with a, this Justice card here, maybe a Libra is relevant or a legal situation is relevant. But more so for this reading, I'm reading it as coming together with somebody, all right? You might be meeting up with somebody and having some flings. I'm just saying. And I know some of you, it's like, that is not your speed, right? Us fixed signs, we want to lock it down. Particular Scorpio, man, you want to own that. You want to get the paper, sign on the dotted line, own it, right? Put a hook in it, you know? But you want to possess, right? <laughs> Scorpio will possess. But I don't know. There's just this vibe that it's like, you got fun on the table, you got random twists and turns, commitment, er, not so sure about that, okay? And I honestly think it might be you that's not putting the commitment out there. I'm just going to say that. Even though I don't think y'all usually roll that way, I think you want it, but I think, and generally you do, but I think the issue that I'm getting off of this is that I think there's some holding back because you're concerned that somebody's not going to give you the happiness or the victory, so there's only so much you give them. It almost stays surfacey is really what I'm getting off this reading. Okay, now in August, when Mars goes into Gemini, I think you're going to have a lot more initiative and courage to communicate. If there have been communication problems during this time, I think things will get better with that by August, where you're maybe defending your ideas more and getting more on it, you know, putting your, laying your cards out on the table about what you think. Um, but maybe, yeah, it might be important to not go to extremes and try to, again, be balanced here. 
with that justice card some of you also i think you're trying to another reason i'm just what i'm getting intuitively uh, there's some caution here and reluctance to really give yourself and buy in fully to these prospects because i think some of you are reevaluating karmic issues karmic bonds okay you want change with these relationships uranus in the seventh house helps you to do that um, but with each person that comes in you're like well is that the kind of change i want or is that going to be the old bullshit because i'm not having the old bullshit anymore right um moving on to august really um this is going to be challenging collectively for all of us because we've got this trouble conjunction happening. And for you, it's in the seventh house. Okay, so, um, you know, Uranus is involved in the transit. And um, I talk more about it, by the way, in my 2022 astrology forecast. Um, with the four of wands, this might have to do with family, home, communications, but in this particular deck, it's another one telling me somebody just wants to play around. Someone wants to just keep it even Steven, okay? <laughs> and just keep it, this is stasis here. This is stasis here. Like, that as well. There's another four. Let's see, we got any fours, eights. Uh, okay. I see a couple fours and eights, all right, where, but... It's in another, which is weird because four, you know, eight is divisible by four. It's two fours, right? But, and four is about stability, but eight is about change, which I'm seeing like is a theme. That's quite an odd thing. Like, oh, I want things to change, but I want things to be stable. That's kind of ironic, right? That's an oxymoron maybe taking us back to why why did you have that two of pentacles like you want things to change but you want things to stay the same okay well back to this triple conjunction in your seventh house in august i mean listen it's going to be bring it it's going to bring about sudden changes for a lot of people that can be quite unpredictable okay and could lead to some heated arguments with people that you care very deeply for be careful about people saying things that just shouldn't be said. I'm hearing mean, hurtful, ugly type stuff. People just putting, pulling out verbal daggers just to, you know, like using their words as weapons and they don't really mean it. They're just trying to get your attention or trying to get you to feel the pain that they feel or something like that. Be aware of this type of stuff. If you yourself are dealing with that type of energy, right like vindictive i mean i'm sorry you are scorpio y'all could do that y'all could go there if you want to right maybe try to channel that energy more positively um rather than arguing you know get into uh, physical exercise martial arts sac sacred sexuality yeah get it out girlfriend <laughs> or guy friend <laughs> get it on out um, because well things are going to pass all right this is the good news this is temporary the energy will shift I do see that some of you are very much probably going to withdraw, okay? You're going to withdraw, and um, some of you, I see you watching on the sidelines uh, that this is going on. You're, you're probably, you, maybe some people are trying to drag you into a conflict, uh, but I, I honestly feel this is like maybe not necessarily about you, but it's on the, you're on the sidelines and you're watching conflict going on. Some of you pulling back and really reflecting within yourself about the conflicts and the battle of wills that have gone on with people and again it might be tied to communication home family matters relationships but on the love front i'm seeing that it is about maybe the conflict is that somebody wants something to change somebody wants something stable and somebody wants to just play around and i'm also seeing it's in the way things are being communicated okay there's a lot of reflection about communication here and how there's been conflict surrounding the communication now in october things are going to spice up a little bit more with the final saturn uranus square so this is another energy that is going to be reminiscent of last year because we had three of them last year in 2021 the final one will be in october of 2022 and so again we're getting some kind of flashback repeat of the same older issues from the year before 
the positive is that it gives you a second chance to resolve something that maybe you didn't resolve last year. You have a second chance of getting that handled. And, um, and the good news is that once we're out of it in October, we're not going to have any more of that for quite some time for years to come. And once that blows over, things are going to calm down a lot in August and October. I'm saying after August and October, okay? And then Jupiter is going to go retrograde back into your fifth house, which could, again, bring more um, happiness back to your, you know, your love, dating, home life. Yeah, I think you're going to move on from whatever this, this difficult issue is in October. I'm sorry, August through October. You're going to move on. You're going to be onward and upward with that energy, all right? And then with Jupiter going retrograde back in that fifth house... Um, returning to some of the joy that you experienced earlier in the year, although it might be more internal uh, because it's retrograde, right? And so it uh, could be a very nostalgic end of the year, but a very reflective one, you know? And some of you reminiscing about the good times, the good old days. And overall, I think that the tough transits of this year are going to allow you to, you know, collect yourself to, um, you know, evaluate issues that need to be evaluated with the four of swords, you know, general, another, another energy, there's another four, right? Uh, some of you don't, you, you, you're, you're, you're fixed. You want to maintain things the way they are, and it's understandable, okay? But I'm also getting here um, communication issues, some of you needing to heal, and particularly with this deck, <laughs> this is a self-service card in this deck. I think some of you are going to deal with some downtime if you are single or you are even in a committed partnership where, um, right, I saw abstinence here. I'm seeing self-service here. I'm seeing somebody being refused and alone over here. I know you don't want to hear this. There are other cards in this mix. Yeah, and somebody's holding back over there. There are other cards in this mix telling me that um, you want attention and you're going to get attention, um, but the kind of attention that you're going to get is um, real, like on the, the an opportunity for a new passionate sexual relationship. Uh, maybe that just comes randomly out of nowhere, no strings attached, not, not a commitment, not anything really solid. And I'm, and I'm sorry to say, but not, not very emotionally deep. Oh, probably not what you want to hear. I'm, I'm, you know, sorry if that's not what you want to hear. Okay. Um, but y'all saw me shuffle on camera. Y'all know it. Y'all know, you know, that I, I'm not making it up. Okay. Well, on the career and finance, we're already getting stuff here with full card could be an Aries is relevant. Definitely a new beginning, okay? A new beginning. Um, but yes, you know, with, with the beginning of the year and that Venus retrograde and Capricorn, um, it's going to be really a high time for you to plan your finances. Heck, I'm in December filming this, and I'm already planning. You know, I'm already getting my business strategies in order, you know, with my, my planner, my daily planner, and my dry erase boards. Heck, yeah, I'm getting it together. So um, if you haven't done that by, you know, this, uh, January of this year, uh, the energy is really pushing you to get a plan, get a financial plan. If you're looking for a job this year, it will be good for you to take advantage of this time, this downtime to um, plan your goals professionally. Or if you're a student, you know, review those, review those goals with your course of study. I'm seeing with the Ace of Wands in reverse. Um, yeah, the, the beginning of this year is not a good time to launch something. Um, this is like a false start, okay? Some of you maybe just want to take a leap of faith and, and, and just start something new and wanting to take a risk and all, you know, it's just, this is telling me, it's confirming what the astrology is saying that probably, definitely during Venus retrograde in January, but maybe well into, you know, really the first quarter of this year. Not the best energy for 
launching something new, it is better for you to kind of um, take that downtime and really get a strategy together. And keep your eyes out for opportunities that come up. Um, definitely from May to October, you could see opportunities come up, but I'm not seeing it here. And if you are working or studying at the beginning of the year, it's going to be important for you to review these plans and goals. Because as you get deeper into the year, May through October, you're going to have a lot more demand on your attention from work. Those are going to be very demanding months for you. So use the downtime to evaluate what makes sense, what's really important to you with your work. And if you are experiencing feelings of frustration or not being valued with your work, well, get a plan. All right, now that now the cards are talking to me, okay? So what I'm seeing here is that finances will improve. And right, these popped out as we were talking about the months of May through October when things improve. I'm loving this, okay? Don't like this card in the upright because that's about poverty, financial loss, blah, blah, blah. But you put it in the reverse. Heck yeah, you're coming out of that. And this is another ugly card, 10 of wands in the upright. But, you know, you put it in reverse, it means that you are laying down some burdens. Maybe you're deciding you don't need to carry all this weight. You start delegating responsibilities. Look at that with the sun. The sun is shining again. The sun comes out again for you. And you're getting some kind of, of blessing here. I'm going to put those up there. Um, you're seeing the truth of the matter. And you're getting some kind of healing and blessing here. Having to do with responsibilities and finances that maybe got you down. Burdened you. Might also have to do with commitments. Beliefs. Maybe a Taurus is relevant for some of you. Uh, with the four of wands in reverse, there we go again with communication problems where um, some of you were going through quite a difficult uh, transition in life. And, I, and I'm seeing also with the knave of swords in reverse, there's some kind of, of difficulty uh, with communicating. I think you need to watch out for May through October. That timeline seems really relevant to these cards. Um, with a page of swords in reverse, might involve an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. But I'm seeing an energy of um, somebody really breaking promises. That, that might be why there's a communication problems. Because somebody is, is you know, not a promise keeper. They're not reliable. They don't say what they mean and do what they say, right? Uh, there could be some gossip, some exaggeration, somebody who's like a manipulator, all right? And that is creating difficulties. But I'm seeing here at the center of it, I, then I just heard somebody's overextending themselves or I just heard aggrandizing, aggrandize. I don't know where that's coming from. Okay, so just be aware of that um, during um, May through October. Do not... Yeah, see, this is about you reflecting on this stuff, okay? Um, some of you, you need to stop taking on any more responsibilities or any more commitments with your line of work, okay? Um, you need to reflect on sacrifices that need to be made during this time frame. And let me kind of move this a little bit so we can fit it all on here. Yeah. Um. And, you know, May into October, let me say that there's uh, a lot of retrograde energy coming up during that time frame. So if you're feeling things are stuck and on hold, I do feel that you're going to be reflecting during this time on, you know, have did I overpromise and underdeliver? Um, how can I underpromise and overdeliver? You're going to be reflecting on um, not overextending yourself or overgiving. And maybe even looking at where if you have done this or you've been around people who do this, what where is it coming from? Like what belief is like it's, it's some kind of false belief maybe. I see commitments and responsibilities really a big thing here. And it's tied to the breakdown of communication. Okay. Let me move on and say that 
um, Jupiter will be in your sixth house from May onward, right? Like basically the second half of the year, Jupiter in your sixth house is, sixth house is about your daily habits and work routines and all of that. This is day to day, the mundane life, right? Um, Jupiter there is really benefic. It's going to bring a lot of growth and expansion and good fortune. So, um, July and August are going to be very favorable months in terms of you getting career recognition. December, November and December, I think that you're going to have more focus on your finances the last two months of this year. Um, and let me also say, if you're wanting to move this year, it's probably likely going to happen between March 6th and April 14th. That's when Mars and Aquarius is going to transit your fourth house. So it would be March through April that a move is very likely to happen if it's going to happen for you this year. Um, judgment and reverse. Knave of Pentacles and reverse. Not a fan of that, okay? Um, some of you... Not getting a second chance with something, okay? And I think it's some bad bad financial news. And I'm not sure, you know, what that's about. Um, this is towards the end of the year. Or actually, it came out about the move. So, um, yeah, I don't like that page of pentacles in reverse because it's almost like some kind of somebody's not committing or they're not planning or their focus is very much now, 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 and they're just not looking at the long term. Okay. Um, and there might be some kind of laziness as to why somebody is not getting a second chance or they're just not with the judgment card in the reverse. They're re refusing to take a time out and do the self-examination and learn whatever lessons have to be learned. Okay. About long-term planning. And I'm hearing analysis, okay? Um, what is this about with the Knave of Pentacles in reverse? Is this bad financial news or what is this about with the Knave? Might be a Taurus Virgo Capricorn that is relevant. What is this? There we go. Yeah, this has to do with um, your public life, okay? The way that you're seen out in public, your career, your status, your reputation. What is this? Judgment and reverse card about. What is this judgment and reverse card about? Okay. Blockages. Oh, well. Might have to do with um, the government, the authority, somebody in authority, and uh, maybe regulations, restrictions, some of you a corporation. And um, I'm unfortunately seeing that there's some kind of block here that you're not able to get past. And in some way, that's that's bad news for your. It might be, a, it's uh, you know what I'm getting off? This is very public. I don't know that it's personal, but it is impacting you personally, okay? I, I think there might be some kind of government regulation or restriction that impacts the public. And, um, if you are asking for an exemption or a um, reinstatement or something like that, I don't, I don't think, I, I think you're going to get blocked on this. I'm, I'm really sorry. Okay. But I don't know that it's anything personal. I think it's, it's something affecting a lot of other people. Um, wow. Some of y'all need a financial reading. <laughs> Uh, Y'all need a financial read. Let me see if I can get some advice on that for you with your finances this year. Financial advice for Scorpio this year. Financial advice for Scorpio this year. Ooh, that one jumped. I don't know if you saw that. That one. Okay. And, all right, that one fell out. We'll take it. We'll take it. Moonlighting. Positivity, faith, and optimism. All right. Some of y'all working working late, late into the night. Um, this says you can start working on your dream career part-time while keeping your other job to pay the bills. Soon your dream career will take flight and fully support you. This might involve work that, you know, happens when the sun goes down, right? I saw this, by the way, right? That came up in the general. Um, you know, I'm getting that... 
really, this is like during off hours, all right, that you pick something up. And I do feel connected to these cards that this is what is, like, if, if things are not looking so hot with your line of work, okay, although I do see you getting busy, um, May onward, I see a lot of blessing coming in with that work, May onward. But leading up to it, and particularly in January, look, this is your downtime. You're, when things are slow, my God, what can you get excited about, all right? Yeah, I'm not going to tell you, run out and do it, you know, like, don't, right, with that coming up, that, where was it? That Ace of Wands in the reverse. I'm not saying start, you know, go gangbusters in January, because I know, based on the card, that's not going to go well. But my God, just start little here, little there, okay? Get something going in your downtime. Um, this card says, you open the doorway to positive experiences and opportunities with your positive expectations and energy. Don't allow negative energy or temporary setbacks to interfere with the path you were going on. Keep the faith and keep going, okay? So some of you, I really feel that, um, you know, if you want to get a side hustle going on, uh, definitely January is a time to really think that through and um, yeah, maybe start getting some things moving. Okay. That, because I feel that's going to keep you going. That's going to keep you um, in a positive, optimistic mindset when things are maybe going a little bit slow. And then when they start speeding up, uh, definitely Jupiter in that fifth house, uh, I'm sorry, sixth house in May, my God, you will have laid all of those foundations and um, this will be kind of riding shotgun there alongside you. Um, don't lose heart. I think this is meant to keep you going during the downtime, okay? And I'm hearing, I'm hearing some of you need to be reminded that delay is not denial. Delay is not denial. It's just about you getting that strategy. You strategizing. And, you know, maybe the strategy is, you know... How can I uh, make my hobby into another stream of income? How can I start laying the foundation for that? Something that could maybe run on autopilot, right? Like putting together some kind of, um, right? I mean, just side note, I'm, I'm going to be working during that time frame on, on putting together some PDFs that are going to be downloadable and monetized. And that's work that I can run on autopilot. Like I write it one time and I sell it many times over. Um, that people who want that, uh, they can download it and I'll be making money off of it, right? Like my book. I wrote my book back in 2018. And every so often I get a little ding from uh, Amazon saying, you just sold another book. And it's awesome because that was work that I did. Wow. That's work I did back in 2019 that I'm still making money off of. So think about that. What can you do? during your downtime and be making money off of it passively, passive income over the next. Well, I've gotten a little bit ahead of myself. This came out. Leo got that, by the way. Um, inner truth, like deep down, you know, okay, this is about the wisdom of the heart, insight, clarity, purity, intuitive knowing, consciousness, penetrating, illusion. And I know that's what you got to do here with the moon. You got to get beyond the veil, pierce beyond the veil. Um, I'm going to say also, you know, in terms of health and healing, and we'll see how these cards tie into that, all right? But I want to tell you, spring to summer with Jupiter in that sixth house is not just about your daily work habits, okay, and your occupation, vocation. It's about your health, your daily health habits. So um, take advantage of this energy because it will be a good time for you to get a new health care regime if that's what you want to do and um it's a time when you can get your health back on track if that's what you want okay august fall as i said before with the the all the mars energy <laughs> which can get into aggression and anger and sexual energy and all that you know um good time for you to like um redirect any kind of pent-up frustration or anger constructively through exercising martial arts, sacred sexuality, really good way to handle that, if possible. Some people, you're just going to have to knock them upside the head, right, right Scorpio? Y'all know how to do that. <laughs> I don't need to tell a Scorpio. <laughs> okay. When Jupiter is in Pisces in early May, I think that if you have been having a crisis of faith at all, okay, 
that's going to improve. You're going to get a lot more confidence in yourself, especially for Scorpio women. And with Jupiter in Aries on May 10th, uh, this is going to be a really important time for you to take care of your health and, again, avoid any kind of excess all the way into October, okay? May through October, the overindulgence, the overextending yourself, the over, 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 like, don't. Just don't do it, okay? Not, not going to be good for your health. And you know your health is your wealth, right? And finally, the sun will enter Scorpio on October 23rd. And this is also going to give you a boost during the year um, in terms of your vitality, your strength, your energy, okay? And with the new moon in Scorpio on the 25th with the solar eclipse, this is going to bring some remarkable changes as well as that full moon in Scorpio, as well as the full moon on November um, with that lunar eclipse, some really big changes coming in. Okay, so what I'm seeing here with this modesty card, you know, this is about you being, um, you know, moderate and reserved um, and uh, avoiding all the overs that I just warned you about. Um, Having some humility, keeping things simple, lack of pretension, self-respect, sincerity, respectability. There's something that um, probably deep down you know you need to kind of rein something in or pull it back in because something has gotten excessive or out of balance or it's just flat not healthy, like enough of that. You know, maybe maybe at a point in time, uh, you know, you, you needed to focus on that, but now it's time to bring some things, um, other things into balance, Okay. With the enthusiasm, this has to do with self-expression, inspiring others, your self-confidence, totality, success, sharing, positive response, and gathering together, massing, converging, unifying, assembling, combining forces. The sun is greater. The sum is greater than the parts is what these cards are saying. So I feel like um, I just heard that you're, your excitement can be contagious, Scorpio. And so use that to bring people together and pull people together. But again, don't don't allow that energy to get you to a place where you're overextending yourself. And I think deep down you know, you know that this energy that you have the ability to show up to the party with and bring, right, and spread it all around, um, you know, the best use of it is that you're bringing people together and forming some very positive, empowering alliances, but don't don't let that energy be used to get you into a place of any kind of extremes or excess, because I think that's just a bad use of the energy. And some of you, you know, deep down right now, as I'm doing this reading, you know what I'm speaking to. You know exactly where it's gotten out of check, out of bounds, and how you need to reel it back in. So I'm going to encourage you in 2022, go on and do that. Overcome. And um, I'm wishing you all the best. Know that I am wishing you a very blessed 2022. Till next time, y'all take care.